so we are we're recording now. Uh, Pump Gatto. What's up? What is up? How you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I just got back from vacation, so I'm just trying to, you know, get back to reality. <laughs> what was the what was the best best thing you did on vacation? What was the what was the uh, main event? It was not working. Okay. Yeah. I, get I didn't that. do. Any, I didn't even do anything too glamorous, to be honest. Yeah. Um. Honestly, a lot of chilling. A lot of chilling. You know, just mm-hmm. you know where I was staying at. There was a balcony, so it was just nice to just you know just have that coffee in the morning and just contemplate over a balcony. Okay. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any of those uh, Georgia peaches? Um, you know what? I barely found out that was a thing today. Oh yeah. <laughs> but I I did go for the try the barbecue. Oh, okay, How uh, was which that? was solid. Okay, um, was it? Here's the thing: was it like a sweeter barbecue or more like a more smoky, savory? Barbecue? You know what? I feel like every place because I've had barbecue in Texas, and like mm-hmm. every place just has a different like um, yeah, like like the barbecue sauce itself that you can you know apply to as a condiment mm-hmm. was more of a vinegary type of. Okay. And I'm personally, I'm I'm kind of basic. I'll I'll be perfectly happy with the sweet baby rays. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, I I did that. I went to the botanical garden, uh, which was beautiful, and I think I was the most impressed by the aquarium that apparently is one of the biggest in the world. Okay. They had like some shark tank there. It was like <laughs> that looked like there was like thirty sharks. In yeah. There. Was it the kind that you look up at, like it's in the wall, and you you get to see them? There were several walls. Okay, yeah, those things terrify me. It, you know what? I'm not gonna lie. Hammerhead sharks look cool, but the regular sharks, those shits look like demons. Yeah, like their face, they just look like if they're pure evil. Dude. Yeah, I I I relate to that, man. Those sea creatures in general scare me you see the, like the it, ocean is just an intimidating thing yeah things can eat you alive there. especially you just get swallowed whole and then they could find you like days later in a shark's stomach because they killed and, it and yeah. i can't swim no that's a little secret that i'm letting you <laughs> i do not know how to swim yeah. so if you throw me in the water i'm gonna die yeah <laughs> yeah i mean they show like You watch, like, Titanic, and people are thinking about, like, the cold water when the ship sinks, or, like, just the fact that no one's rescuing. I I just think killer whales, man. Killer whales can come and snatch people up whole. Um, I remember as a kid going to SeaWorld, and there would be, like, a tunnel of sharks, where, like, you go through the tunnel, and it's glass all around you, and I I just would have, like, little panic attacks, thinking, like, what if that glass grass cracks you know i thought the same thing yeah i like uh i felt a level of unease um and then funny enough one of my friends pointed out to me that says like like i guess they know i guess they know people are think some people out there thinking that yeah they sh- they show this is what's like uh pretty much they they kind of flexed what what was what, what the glass was and it was like fucking this Thick glass okay. pillar. Yeah. It was like, oh, okay, yeah, nothing's gonna. Yeah. Even if someone gets a clip and and lights that shit up, like it's, it's probably stands. Yeah, yeah, like so. When I saw that, I went, all right, we're good. We're good. Did you ever see? Um, was it Deep Blue Sea? Um, I didn't. But isn't that the one where there's like super intelligent sharks or something? Yeah, they got yeah. Like I'm like not lab. watching that. It's, <laughs> I I don't know if I've ever actually watched it. I remember seeing scenes from it when I was a kid, though, and it's it's just a it seems like a goofy movie. I think LL Cool J is in it. Yeah, I I, I can enjoy a good bad movie. Yeah, a yeah. good bad movie. Um. So let's let's talk let's talk slang. Um. It's been, um, what, a few months now that slang's been going on? This one is going to be the fifth one. Fifth event? So, yeah, okay. it started in April, April 2nd. And it, has it been um, relatively monthly then? Like once uh, a month? Initially, I was making it um, every month and a half. Okay. And so I just made a decision just to, at least for this, the remainder of the year, just to have a two-month interval. So the last one, I believe, was August 8th. Um, and the next one after the one that we have, um, October 7th, mm-hmm. I believe it's going to be December 5th. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a good move. It's always, um, 
I feel like it's always better to have more time between than less time, just because, like, people can only go to so many shows exactly. at once. And I do aspire to do it monthly. Yeah. It's just, um, I'm, I'm kind of just dipping, I kind of still dipping my toes in the whole thing. Yeah. And it's, um, cause even just starting it was just kind of, like, I didn't do anything during the, the height of the pandemic. I didn't mm-hmm. really do anything. Like, I probably just barely started returning to the scene by, like, through other, through attending other events. Mm-hmm. One of which I remember seeing you. Yeah. At the start of this. Yeah. Uh, um, at the Robles, Robles, the Robles show. event. Yes. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and I don't like it's, um, it was something that I feel like I wasn't even sure I wanted to continue, mm-hmm. but it was just kind of one of those things as the scene started to come back, it was just, it's easy to quit something that doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when I saw it, it was just like, you know what, it's, right now is a good time, you know? Mm-hmm. And I feel like I came, the timing in which I started was pretty good. Yeah. Because, like, there wasn't a lot of events happening. Mm-hmm. There was, but not, like... Like there were like pre pre yeah. the pandemic. Yeah, no, you you really capitalized on a need there. Uh, yeah. Filled that role that people so, needed. So I did was thinking like that, you know, like there's you know, sometimes there's there's a it felt like there was a void. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And especially free. So that's like one of the biggest things that I'm been trying to do free. Yeah. I don't know how long that'll make sense for, but I'm committed for the duration of the year for it to be free. Hey, are you, when you say free, are you for... No for, cover. N- there's, there's no cover at all? There's never been a cover. Okay, yeah, I was expecting it to be like 10 bucks or something to nah. get in. That is awesome. That's the that's the way to do it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that helped a lot, you know, because like I came in and there wasn't really a free showcase at, at the time, much mm-hmm. less that many to begin with. And I feel that kind of helped jumpstart. Yeah. In some ways, maybe I just kind of got lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, good time. I mean, that's uh any any like good business venture. You ever read? Um, there's this book by Malcolm G- Gladwell called. Uh, I don't remember what it's called right now. Um, but he talks about how like Bill Gates, right? Um. Everyone thinks that he's just a smart guy that worked really hard to get to where he's at. But what really happened is he was born at this time where when he was in high school, not a lot of people had computers, but he happened to go to this school that happened to have a computer. And then when he went to college, he happened to have this program at his college, which was like a one out of 500 chance that he happens to have this, where he gets trained in computers, you know? Um, And so by the time he had graduated, everyone else that wanted to compete with him were just starting to learn about computers, where he had put in these hundreds of hours just by chance to become like this expert in computers. Uh, It's it's a similar thing. uh, Yeah, like honestly, like really just... Like, um, sure, some people could really have the bootstrap approach and, like, really, but sometimes you just are at the right place at the right time yeah. or, and, that, and, you and say, you're a product of it. You say yes to the opportunity. You and just, even, and not to take away from people that, you know, that come up to the opportunity because obviously, you know, it's kind of a opportunity meets preparation. Yeah. I feel like if I wasn't already, like, ha- been yep. doing shows in the past, I wouldn't have been even able to see that. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you were the the right person at the right time to really pick up uh, the mantle for what was needed. But it's still a trial because, like, honestly, like, I don't really feel I'm giving it my all. To be honest, like, mm-hmm. it's um, it, this has really just been dipping my foot in it, mm-hmm. and a lot of it is due to that I'm doing it alone. Yeah, like, um, I'm doing it alone. I have people that support me, but ultimately, at the end of the day. It's just me. I'm doing the lineup. I'm just I'm I'm the one doing the st- stuff behind the scenes, you know. Yeah. Um, how how has it felt um, during each show? Being that you're the one who's really uh, running it by yourself, are you just running around in the chaos of the moment? Um, um, how does it feel? 
I'm having more fun than I have oh, yeah? it. Yeah, like to be honest, like um, because the thing is, like it, for me right now, I'm not really coming from a hungry place. Yeah. Like as far as you know, like have some type of plan for expansion. To me, like it's, I'm trying to manifest the things that I want. You know, yeah. like literally, and and like I also book people that I that I am inclined to listen to their music and also that I just fuck with them and, like, it's going to be a vibe no matter what. Like, yeah. like I'm not really trying to book someone that I don't have some type of rapport with, even despite them being dope, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of... You know, there's exceptions to that. Sometimes, you know, it does benefit to ha bring in someone new just to expand the network for the sake of the people in the network. Mm-hmm. But usually that that happens is because they're vouched for vouched for by someone that I already like you know yeah. give that pump gato stamp of approval you know <laughs> yeah I get you that's that's a good way to do it like there is I'm sure there's people who hear that and think like well maybe you're not gonna have the best shows though but like the energy that you get from lining up a show with people that you want to hang out with that energy compounds in a way that it doesn't with a group of strangers performing i totally feel that yeah i i feel like i've had some shows that uh you could say i, I didn't exactly have 50 people but there was enough people and everybody you know vibes with each other i've had some shows mm -hmm. where people literally show up from the artists show up from the start to the end of the show yeah and that's what I want. Like, I don't want someone that's just going to show up and bounce. Like, mm -hmm. to me, like, you're not doing anything for, for, for the event. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, that's one of the most frustrating things. And I can't, and I don't really, I feel like that's why I prefer to book people that I already have some rapport with or that mm -hmm. I personally know. Because I also don't want to articulate, like, I, at the same time, just like, I ain't shit to be telling people what they can do. Yeah. Like, I don't want to, I'm just trying to put people, t uh, bring people together, you know, let's buy off of music. I don't want to be on some promoter tip where I need you to bring this many people and yeah. all like that. Like, I'm really trying not to be that. Yeah. So, and that's why it's, for me, it's like, I will say for people that want to perform, they should probably come to the event. Yeah. And I know it sounds like you could, you're saying that, like, because I'm bringing well, people yeah. in. But realistically, if you've come to the events and you're some of the artists that I book, I feel like you kind of have a sense that I'm not, like, yeah, if you're not someone that I wouldn't have a beer with, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good model. I mean, it is, it's one of the most frustrating things when you're either promoter or another performer and somebody shows up just for their set and leaves. Um, especially if they got like, they, they bring in their own crowd just for their set and leave. Then it's like everyone there, like, what are you guys, what are you guys doing here? You aren't supporting the venue. Like, cause no one's, no one's getting their drinks there. They're all drinking it outside, coming in for the set and then bouncing. Like, I think that's very, I feel like some artists might take this as a, take offense for it, but I feel like, <laughs> I guess it, it all depends on what you want to accomplish and what yeah. you want. I feel like doing something like that is kind of short-sighted. Mm -hmm. Because like I feel like you're not being conscious enough to know that, like, you should have, like, the sense that the person that's throwing shows might not think you're like doing it. anything for them. Yeah. And that's only true if it's not paper play. Obviously, like, if... Mm -hmm. If you're paying to play, then... Yeah, then you paid for it. Yeah, like, it's whatever. But if it's a show that's, like, for free, or even it's still a cover, but, like, they don't exactly book just anybody, mm -hmm. like, I feel like you have to bring value yeah. to the event, because ultimately, LA is full of talent. A lot of fools yep. are a dime a dozen. Mm -hmm. A dime a dozen. Yeah, it's also, like, it's also short-sighted in the sense that, like, you aren't getting any new fans. Like you can, you can perform. A you great need to connect show. with people. Yeah. yeah, you gotta, you gotta let people know who you are. Because even if you play a great set, people are gonna be like, "Who's, who's that dude?" Like All if right. you're not, if you're not, uh, if you're not out there talking to people, like really letting your your presence known, like yeah. letting your, like it's just you're just going. 
just to experience performing, I guess. Yeah, it's it's some weak sauce right there. And it just comes down to maybe some people's heads are in that place, and if that is, and you know, all well. Yeah. But like, if you're actually serious about trying to to build your name, people should. Yeah. <laughs> no, you mean out there. <laughs> also, like, it's it's a weird thing that's very um, anti anti the culture. You know, like, are you not like a part of the culture that you want to like experience the whole show? You know, like even shows that I go to as like an audience member, I try to people stay pick for up the on that. Thing. People, I feel like people pick up on that. They, they should not be conscious to know that people pick up on that. Yeah, on like the blatant self interest, like people pick up on it, mm-hmm. and I feel like you know a lot of people have been done dirty, you know, like in have been lied to, been tricked, or like have had some negative experience in the scene. A lot of times they just act on their trauma, and I and might just see someone just do something like that, and I really write them off as nah, fuck this fool. Yeah, and it kind of be like that, you know, like I feel like. People, a lot of people have been done dirty in the scene, and mm-hmm. like, your the guard is pretty high. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is um, that's a true statement right there. A lot of people in um, the hip hop scene, particularly, are very uh, standoffish. Their their guards high. They're not they're not ready to be. Um, they're, what they're you not mean willing by to that? be disrespected. <laughs> you know, a, a minor offense like that is that's a serious offense. Um, I mean, there's so, people out there they'll probably hate on you forever just because you walked out in the middle of their set. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I, and, and I understand that, but, yeah. you know, it's just, I guess all I can really say is you just really have to be conscious of yourself, yes. how you carry yourself, and what you do, you know? Yeah, yeah I'm, always, I'm always worried about that when, like, somebody, I go, I go stand real close to the stage for, like, a buddy of mine, and then the next artist will perform, and I'm like, "Shut! All right, I'm gonna stay right up here for the, at least one song, because like I don't want I don't want them to see me walk away right away, you know? Um, or like, if somebody calls me over for something halfway through somebody's set, I'm always like, I'm a. They they only got a couple more songs, I'm sure. I'll stay here until the till the break between artists, because um, like, yeah, it's it's. I know I know what it's like when you're performing and you see somebody <laughs> walk away and like it's probably not even because your performance they probably have something going on but like you feel it as if they're <laughs> purposefully like I feel like, like you know you. I feel like everybody has a job in that setting like yeah. be 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 conscious that like maybe I don't know it looks inconsiderate yeah at the same time being the artist you know, be yeah, some, you know, like, you know, they're, things they're, they're, they're just out there having a the smoke. It's not personal. Yeah. They've been out here maybe this long. So if they leave, it's not me. It's just, you know, they're just, you know, mm-hmm. they need to take a smoke break or whatever. You know, it is yeah. what it is. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like anyone, you know, just. Yeah. Uh, understanding that everyone's got. Be conscious. For things. And the other side, you know, just understand and not take it personally. Yeah. Uh, so this coming show on the seventh, um, what what can you sell to the audience here? What's your pitch? Who who who? I are don't, ha- I don't have I don't have a pitch. If you don't yeah. want to come, don't come. Okay. I, I mean, like, who who are these artists performing? Why are they dope? You know. Okay. Damn, you made me like. Uh, I've been in Atlanta. I don't even remember <laughs> the line. Of, I know I do remember the line. I'm just kidding. Um, I always try to get a pretty good lineup. I try to have variety, so I feel like I feel like most shows that I'm gonna put on, I expect to be good. Yeah, like at least based on the lineups that I get. You know, like I try to. I don't like. I'll never have a trap show. Or just a boom bap show. I like little, you know, little different flavors of hip hop in it. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing I would say. Maybe I haven't consciously like said, I haven't articulated that. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of a thing that I do. Okay. Like I specifically want to have a level of variety, of variety in that. Okay. Do you plan out the um, the order of the performances before the night of, or do you um, have it? 
based on who's showing up. Whenever. It depends. Yeah. It depends, and um, but a lot of times I have it ahead of time. Okay, ahead of time. Yeah, because uh, yeah, it makes me wonder like how you flow the variety together. Um, if you do it like yeah, I do think about that as like like I already like uh <laughs> like uh like when I do when I do lineups like I already have like a like a notepad open on my phone mm -hmm. where like when I book someone I don't I just already initially think okay this person's gonna be in the middle yeah. and then sometimes I'll get someone else and be like you know what now that I got this person I'm not gonna put three boom bap people back to back I'm gonna yeah. maybe move one as an opener so it could be a strong start you know like mm -hmm. I just I don't really try to think of how everything is um, what's, what's the, uh, what's the, like, time frame for the event? Um, when's, when's it start and when's it end? The, the event is from, from doors open at nine, like most events okay. do, but, uh, the events run pretty short. Like, okay. I definitely do not want to, myself, like, a stage manage freaking, like, 20 acts. Yeah. I like shows like that, mm -hmm. but I'm not willing to do that because I also want to chill at the yeah. event. Like, if I'm barely doing eight, but at first I was doing six. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm starting to add on, but I don't see myself doing more than eight. Okay. Unless yeah. maybe some really dope act that came my way that I, that I just felt like I had to book, you know? Mm -hmm. like. <laughs> Yeah, I, I get you. I, I prefer, uh, shorter shows. Um, it, it gets tiring, especially when it, when shows start late, which, um, like the nine o'clock doors open is normal, um, for hip hop, it seems. Um, a lot of, a lot of like the punk shows I'd go to with doors open at like seven or six. Um, and I'm, I'm such a, uh, like early to bed person that like, by the time by the time midnight comes along, I'm like, yeah, we're we're gonna be wrapping up soon, right? Midnight is that's that's my that's well, my bedtime. It's not gonna end at midnight. Yeah, but I typically like the latest it really has ever ended is one, yeah. and that's just because you know people wanted to stick around and chill. Yeah, but like since I only have so many acts. It's really intended to be like a short two hour to two and a half hour, two and a half hour mm -hmm. thing. And that's why I want people to be there for the whole thing. Cause like, I mean, yeah. at least you can't commit two hours to an event. Like, yeah. come on. Like, yeah, I'll tell you what. Sometimes, um, sometimes I've gone to like concerts where the main event goes too long. Like the opening acts will be great and I'm feeling good. And then like halfway through the headliners of uh, headliners performance, I'll be like, what's that? Like seven songs already? Like you guys played half an album here. You're going to keep going. And then people start chanting for an encore afterwards. And it's like, all right, we just sat through like an hour and a half of this band. You guys want more from this one band? Uh, uh, I kind of feel you on that. Cause like for myself, I'm very trying to be really conscious of attention span, you know, like, yeah. like, um, for me, like, I ideally want sh sets to be short, you know, yeah. like, I, some artists really want to push for a little longer and just, and you know, sometimes I'm willing to do it, but I feel like there's a certain tier, like, like, yeah. like if you want to do a certain amount of time, like, I feel like, if you really think you could, if it's not just an ego thing, like, yeah. I, I really want to perform all these songs, like, like, if it's that, you can go to hell. Mm -hmm. But like, <laughs> but if you're dope, yeah, if and you, you really curate a set where you feel like you'll kill it and, and keep the crowd for that time, then you deserve that set. Yeah. But if that's not the case, and you know, honestly, I feel like, not everybody is, and mm -hmm. and that's okay, cause like I'm a fan myself of just doing doing short sets, like just yeah. doing. To me, I think three songs are enough yeah. personally. I I agree. I think the longer sets are for um, people that probably already know your songs. That's it. That's and they're it. gonna sing along to them. Yeah. <laughs> if 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 people know your songs and can sing along, then they start liking the longer sets. But if if you're if you're a new or artist where people don't have your songs memorized then yeah t three th t three or four songs where like 
every time they see you, you they'll pick up one and then they start to remember it, you know? Um, yeah, so let's see. You got you got a good mix of variety on this show on the seventh. Um, it's gonna be doors opening at nine. Where's it gonna be at? It's gonna be in Miranchito. Oh yeah, it's um, Boy Heights, it's like off of First Street, like right in front of the Gold Line. Mm-hmm. I, I keep seeing. Um, I, keep I like it because it's pretty. Because it's intimate. Yeah. I guess it's kind of narrow. So it's like uh, I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I keep seeing that there's shows there. Is that... Variety um, of shows, too. Like, even metal and punk and yeah. all kinds of stuff. Um, is that... Did it used to go by a different name? I'm not sure. I, I do know that place under is, is under new management, and it used to be not what it is now. Okay. I heard before it was... Like once upon a time, the owner got stabbed or something. Oh, okay. But now that it's not that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but so, I don't know about the past. I just know, as far as I know, this year it's been pretty solid for a lot of people that have done stuff there. Okay, right on. Um, so what's what's your background in music? How did you get into uh, making music? Um. I don't think that whole thing is like all over the place to be honest. Yeah. Cause like I didn't even rap for like the longest. Mm-hmm. Like I was a rocker. Okay. I came from a rocker foundation. You know, I was really like really about guitar and like in my mind I was just, I was just trying to be like some top level shredder, like yeah. a guitar. <laughs> that's and, and, and that's where my head was at. Like I got, dope. I've been like, what were but, you listening to? I just honestly, I feel like it's such a cliche to say I listen to everything. Yeah. I don't listen to everything, but I do list my variety is pretty. Like I've been to the Big Four concert. Okay, the so, Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax, <laughs> Slayer. Slayer. Yeah. Okay. So like I have listened to that. I've seen Tool live before. Oh, nice. Yeah, and and I like all that type of stuff, but I'm also a really big Spanish rock fan. Okay. And um I like Spanish rock a lot. Um I used to really <coughs> listen to Van Halen back in back in the day and Okay. You know, one of my first albums that I listened to was Hybrid Theory by Linkin Park. Oh, oh, it's a classic. Yeah, even I remember even um uh, having around that same time having the I'm not even I'm not even sure the chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored okay, water. Okay, yeah, the Lil Biscuit, Biscuit album. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, not their best, but it's it's good. I mean, uh, I still remember at the time really liking the My Way song. Yeah, and how they made it a theme song for that Stone Cold versus The Rock. Oh yeah, in WWE, and uh, that was the hype at the time. So like, yeah, to me, like I connected that album with that. Yeah, um, I'll tell you what, man, Hybrid Theory is. I tell people all the time like people who have bad song structure in their songs because there, there's a lot of rappers who just want to write a verse and don't oh, just really bars? hooks and choruses and i tell them like listen to hybrid theory listen to how every song's structured because like they know how to make a verse to chorus to verse to chorus to bridge and end a song like that and like that's one of the reasons why that album's so huge, because every song is so perfectly structured. I appreciate structure a lot. Yeah. And honestly, I feel like a lot of uh, my music is really influenced by coming from a rock foundation, like that yeah. structure. So I never, like, like I know what you're saying about the whole just wanting to spit. Mm-hmm. It's kind of an underground thing, you know, like some people yeah. really want to just bar out and honestly, it's a lane and some people will flourish in that. Yeah. Um, but I never really came into it like with that, in that mindset. Mm-hmm. To me, it was just more like, shh, like. Yeah, I'll like, I'll like, like, if you, if you have like a 10 track album and you have like two songs with no, no choruses, just verse. But you're eventually cool. going to need the hooks. But you need, you need your, your singles, you know, um. You need your backstreet backseat freestyles <laughs> with your um with your reels or whatever. Um and that's, that's why I like um fifty cent a lot. Oh, I yeah. would say I would say I would say what you're saying about them, I would say about about um about Fifty Cent's Get Rich or Die Trying album. Yeah. Cause like I I really like researched that album and studied it and like 
a lot of songs start with the hook. So yeah. like you're already immediately driven mm -hmm. to the song by the hook like early on. And even like uses um flex melodies. Like um like in the club. Like mm -hmm. like like right like, I guess you could say like when you use an when you use um something that could easily be a hook, yeah. but you don't yeah, I guess you could say you squander it and you just use it as an opening for the song. Mm -hmm. Kinda like um you know how he says it's your birthday? Yeah. Like that in itself could have been, been a hook. hook. But yeah. he's just flexing that melody and like I could not use it. Like, yeah, I, I'll tell you what. I I think I like underappreciated him until um, a couple of years ago. A friend mentioned like he's a big influence, and I was like, really? I did like that album growing up. I'm gonna go re-listen to it. And I think that he was one of the first to do like the J Cole semi singing hooks. Like the verses are just straight rapping, and then he do like the half rapping, half singing for like the hooks and stuff. And that variety makes your ear catch it, cause like all those all those songs with them singing it, like the uh, many men, many 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 many, many <laughs> wish death upon. I can picture people Christmas caroling to that song. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's so catchy. Um, and that that album is hit after hit. Of even his songs. even him doing the song. If I was your best friend, like yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> he is really good at that. Yeah. Um, so you, you were playing guitar, yeah, I, do you, do you play, still play? Do you have a guitar, do you play? Not really, I mean, on occasion I touch it, but I wouldn't dare call myself a guitarist. Okay. Like, no. You, you ever, you ever <laughs> think about, like, adding, uh, adding a guitar solo to one of your songs? Uh, I, I, here's the thing, I do want to pick the guitar up mm -hmm. again, but I feel like I've spent so much time, like, trying to find what I wanted, like, as far as sound, or just kind yeah. of discovering myself as a rapper. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I barely found, like, kind of, like, what I'm going to run with. Yeah. And I do not want to overextend myself. I feel yeah. like right now in my head, I need to put out as much music as I can, mm -hmm. maybe at least an album. And at which point there, I almost feel like, okay, you know, like, I did it. Now I can pursue maybe do a, a, switching it up. do an album that has like that's probably more you know me focusing on being an instrumentalist. Yeah, I'm still doing vocals, but maybe not. Maybe just how do I say this? Like um, like I'm just trying to find a way to articulate, have a little brain, like... Yeah, experimenting. Just um, not necessarily experimenting. Like, um, I, like I, I still want to be, I, I guess, being more of a vocalist than mm -hmm. a rapper. Yeah. Like, if I rap in a song, it's just, you know, just because it's what the song needed. Yeah, okay, but I'm yeah. not going to go into it... Thinking this is a rap yeah. album. Just, yeah. Just, okay, yeah, I get you. Um, Something probably more like alternative R&B, hip-hop type okay. of stuff. That's something that I would like to do with a guitar in the future. Yeah. But for now, I don't want to think about about touching the guitar. I just want to focus on my raps and just record as many songs as I can. Yeah, I, I relate to that. When I first uh, became Kid Icarus, um, I just focused on rapping. Um, I, I was like, I just want to get some YouTube beats and just get like a mixtape together and just not focus on instrumentals at all. Just think about rapping. And then once I got that out, I was like, I think I was planning on my second project being the same thing where I just found beats and went along with it. Um, but instead, like I, I was just messing around on garage band with like the eight oh eights and stuff. And that's how I ended up uh, making all the instrumentals for my next project was because I had done the um I had done the mixtape so I had that freedom to try and experiment cuz I already had stuff to perform you know so I get like uh I get the need to be like I'm going to focus just on rapping right now until I get something out then then it's like you have the freedom there to experiment I'm I'm kind of doing the same thing right now with the EP I've been working on where like I want it, uh, my brain is so much like, just get it out, and then you can figure out what to do next, you know? Uh, then you can have more fun with it. Um, 
That being said, though, not not like anything that I've ever made was not fun. It's all fun. It's all yes. fun to make. Yeah. But I feel like I, I I guess maybe I'm also speaking from just being anxious. Yeah. Just because I feel like people have known about me in the hip hop scene for a good minute, mm-hmm. but I haven't really done anything to establish myself as an artist. And that's kind of like the what I'm really trying to do. So I, I just I just feel like I need to put stuff out. Yeah. That's why I was happy this year I was able to release like my first solo music video, which I was pretty happy about. And I'm trying to do more. Yeah. Did you um self direct it? Like uh who who did you get involved with making the video? I did not well I mean creatively it was all me. Yeah. Um, but I had, I had worked with, uh, Muds. Okay. On the, on the, he did the editing and the videography. And there was some stuff that, you know, you know how sometimes you have an idea that sounds good in theory, but then it doesn't. Yeah. Like, like there's certain scenes that I didn't think of that I do owe him, like for a suggestion. Yeah. You know, there's a scene that I just thought, this is kind of ridiculous. And then when I see it, like, oh shit, this looks fucking, this yeah. is the best scene. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, um, I've been on, on set for a few of, uh, Complex's videos. Um, and there's been some where I'm like, this is the dumbest idea. This is gonna turn out so stupid. And then it ends up being hilarious. And, um, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes you just gotta try something. That's right. Um, and like, also, it's much better on set to, shoot way more than you need. Yes. Because, like, if you shoot too little, then you're in there editing, and you spend so much time editing, and then you get to a point where you're like, okay, well, I kind of wasted all this time editing because we got to shoot more now. Um, and that's that's a way worse feeling, where if you shoot too much, yeah, whatever. You just cut, cut some out. That's fine. Um, and it's... It's so hard to get everyone on set, right? To schedule something, you know? Um, yeah. Honestly, I feel like one of the songs that I actually really want to do a music video to, yeah. I feel is the one that has gotten the most like reaction from people when I've performed it. If, I feel like it's the song that makes the most sense mm-hmm. to do a video. Um, but it's kind of, I need people for the song. And I'm kind yeah. of reluctant to depend on people. Right. Like, even for my last video, like, it would have made sense if I had a lot of people in it. But, like, because, um, but I literally had people double cast. Mm-hmm. Like, the theme was that I was a luchador. And there was my opponent and there was a referee. And, um, but I just really just had three friends. Um. One of them that was just part of a gang that was going to jump me at the end of the video. And the rest of them, the referee. But the referee and the, and the, and the referee and the, and the wrestler, they kind of did a double roll. So I made, I put, I bought these, like these skull masks. Mm-hmm. So like after that, they were still like, they acted as they were someone else. Yeah. No one really noticed them unless you play close attention. Mm-hmm. But like I specifically just to not rely <laughs> on people I accounted for, you know what? I have these masks, so you can do two rolls. Yeah, like if I need you to do two rolls, that's a slick way to do it. Um, <laughs> and it worked. I, it was it was perfect. Yeah, that's that sounds like a good one. I'm I might have to check that one out. You as a luchador, that sounds like a good time. And I had a lot of fun with that. Too. Yeah. Did you guys get like a ring and did yeah. you set? It? Oh yeah. Yeah, we had a ring and everything. I really went. Nice. I feel All like with it, huh? I feel like that was gonna be the first kind of debut type of thing. So I feel like I wanted to just come in. Yeah. With some, and also I just wanted to just give people a sense of me. You know, like it's like I'm never gonna be that cool guy, like mm-hmm. rapper, all serious and shit. You know, I'm just you know. I don't take myself that seriously. Yeah. And, like, I'm all for, like, some ridiculous-ass, ludicrous type of music video mentality. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just have a good time with it and all. Um, do you ever you ever watch the uh, Evil Dead movies? Evil Dead. The chainsaw arm guy? Chainsaw and a shotgun? I don't uh, think I have. So no? I've heard okay. the name because I like horror movies. Yeah. And I've probably browsed and saw that. 
But um, I haven't seen that. They are the they are some of the best movies I think ever. Um, they're they the first one's super serious horror movie. Second one that it starts getting ridiculous, and so it's a bit of a comedy. The third one just goes all out comedy. Um, but when they were filming it, um, they didn't have enough actors for the roles, and so they did that as well. And they said that um, in the Three Stooges, uh, the character of Shemp got replaced halfway through the series, and nobody ever mentioned it. They just replaced him with a different character. Um, and so when they were filming The Evil Dead, like they'd have somebody for a role, and then they'd leave halfway through the filming, and so they'd just get another person to come in and film, like... Oh, it's just his legs or something standing, and they call it shemping. So when it, shemping? whenever I think, yeah, when the, whenever I think of the like character playing two roles, oh yeah, they were shemping there for a minute, huh? Um, yeah. See, so you said you're a big horror fan, huh? What, what Honestly, I like? I don't feel like I've seen my. I do appreciate horror movies. I don't okay. know how extensively, like, I mean, obviously I grew up with, like, slasher films. Okay, yeah. Like, uh, like I actually saw that new, uh, Scream movie that came out recently, which I thought it was fun. Okay. Yeah, those, those movies have always been kind of, uh, silly, right? The Screams, they But they're fun. With it. But yeah. they're fun. They're fun. Did you see, um, have you seen Prey? The new Predator movie? Yeah. It was pretty good, right? Yeah. I that one it. was pretty dope. Like, it was pretty, like, I, I like how that dog helped, helped her, like, pass her that thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know if you, uh, I remember I said, like, the nerdiest thing when I saw that movie to one of my friends. Like, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Naruto anime. I know of it. I've seen a bit. Well, I mean, pretty much there's this one guy that his partner's a dog. Mm-hmm. And they, they help each other in the fights. Yeah. So I kind of like connected you call, that. Called her that <laughs> yeah. guy's name. Okay. Yeah, I watched like the first um, 16 episodes of Naruto and tried to, I tried my hardest to get into it. Um, it has this problem though where every episode starts with like eight minutes of the end of the last episode. Oh, that's very fucking anime, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, ultimately, they're trying to stretch out a, a 12 to 16 page manga b- yeah, book into, into, into like 20 minutes. Season. They yeah. all do that. Some are worse than others at that. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you watch a good amount of anime? Um, I, I guess you could say that. Do you watch I, Attack I on Titan? Um, I haven't really finished that last season, just because I do like the show. Um, it just, I just feel like they waited too long between seasons. I just like by the yeah. time like the new season came on, I'm just like, so what? Yeah, like, lost a bit of interest. I I kind of felt like that going into it, and then I watched. At it first, it blew my like, mind. You know, it was like I was yeah. really, but then it's just like, okay, you're not gonna come out with another season for like fucking three, four years. Like, yeah, like. It's it's a great show. They, I, I do think people will love it. Maybe people that are probably barely getting into it now, they might just get to not have to deal. All of it, yeah. They'll I, love it for sure. I, I think that happened a bit with me because I didn't watch uh, any of it until like the third season was out, and I think the biggest gap was between like the first and second. Um, oh yeah, it was questionable if they were even gonna do it. Yeah. Um, but now it's immensely popular. That it's, it's, they're definitely it's not even a it. question. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's also wild that they were like, "Oh, it's the final season," and then half of it came out, and they were like, "All right, second half's coming that later." Me off. And it's like, you guys said it was the last season. This feels like a whole new season. No, it's the same season. It's just the second half of this season. No, this is a whole different season. You liars. Uh, Pieces of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's, I, I bring that up because that's like the only anime I watch that and One Punch Man. Um, yeah. So, let's see. We got, we got the show on the 7th. Um, yeah, so how, how much music have you put out? Because I know you have put out music before. Um, I just have like six songs out to be honest. Okay, that's a, that's a decent amount. That's like an EP. Um, is that, uh, SoundCloud or Spotify? No, it's on all platforms. All platforms? Okay, right on. Which is your favorite? You have a favorite? Um, I'm not sure if I can really... 
I have, I mean, I, I could say which one I think is my best song, but I wouldn't say that oh, it's okay. my favorite. Yeah. Uh, probably the song called Back Me Up, which is the one that I would like to do a music video to, but I need people. Yeah. Because, like, the whole, the whole song, the song would not make sense unless I had people. Yeah. Because, like, the whole song is, if I can do it on my own, I got a squad to back me up. Okay, and then it's, yeah. yeah, so it's like I need yeah, the whole need song. The whole song is about my peeps and all that. Mm -hmm. And, and it just is what it is. Like, I feel like, um, a lot of, a lot, you know, it's funny is that a lot of my close friends are not even in the hip hop scene. Yeah. Nor really have an interest for this hip hop stuff. Yeah. So, like, I always felt kind of in a weird place. And maybe that's even why I felt the need to manifest this. Yeah. See, because I feel like it's also a void that I had in my in my own life. Yeah, like I, I need too. to be connecting with people that are, that are like the same type of shit that I do. Yeah. A lot of my homies are just doing their own thing. They're just they have nothing to do with hip hop. Yeah, I I get you. I don't like. Have... I wouldn't even invite them to the show because I feel like they won't even have a good time. <laughs> Sorry, it's okay. Second. Okay. Okay. <sighs> My phone decided it was out of memory, it seems like. So I just gotta delete the last thing. But no, I I feel you on the um not having friends in hip hop. Um, cause I, most of my closest friends too, um, not into hip hop at all. Like, I feel like there's not even point in inviting. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Like they'll go just to be nice. I don't feel like they're even going to vibe and I don't want that. Yeah. Right. Don't want to make them do something that, that if they don't want to, um, I got I got a lot of. That's kind of why this event is important to me too, you know. Mm -hmm. I got a, I got a few like family men friends, you know, that are uh, yeah, way too busy. To... Yeah, and that's definitely the case. Has been the case for me as well too. I'm sorry, audio listeners. I am sitting here trying to set up the camera again and it keeps sliding down my dashboard I think we're good <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah we're back but yeah like I, I video. I'm glad you kind of because like I don't know if it's just one of those the grass is greener type of thing, but mm -hmm. I feel like if people go to shows like they have their squad and shit yeah <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally get that. I mean, I have, I, don't get me wrong, like, I, it's not like I don't have, I don't have a relationship with the artists mm -hmm. that I put on, or like, I don't have people, but like, outside of that world, it's not like, like, you know, some fucking, they know who I was 10 years ago type yeah, of thing, you like know? Yeah, all, all the oldest friends and stuff. Or, or would even be like, when's my birthday type of shit, you know? Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I got a lot of love for the for the hip hop scene, mm -hmm. but you know, I just kind of accept it, and that it's just you know, you can't really. And I know there's people that just kind of take it personally that their friends are not supporting them and yeah. shit, and it's just like, I mean, they're supporting you. It's just like, dude, it's just you can't fake it, you know. Yeah. If it's not your scene, it's not your scene. Yeah. Like it's, um. I, when I was younger, um, it was always so weird to me um, that my friends didn't want to um, go to shows and stuff. Like, I would go to a lot of shows by myself um, because, same. Uh, like, I wanted to, for sure. I was like, the, this band's playing? Oh, I'm definitely going to go. Um, and, like, when I would perform, uh, uh, like, once or twice... Yeah, and my whole friends and family would show up. Um, then by like the third or fourth, 
I'd be performing to an empty room, you know? It starts to, it, it feel like that's kind of what happens. Like, uh, when you first start doing it, like, your people, like, there's just a the novelty of, hey, yeah. the homie Icarus is speeding, yeah. let's, let's see, let's see it. But then after a while, it's just kind of, after a while, it's just kind of, you know, just. Yeah, it becomes the grind. It just and, becomes uh, a grind. And it's definitely like. It has to be. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's no, no faults. No, no shade on them for not continuing oh, no. the grind. Because, I have, I have like, no ill feelings towards yeah. like, and it because everyone has their own lives. You That's know? right. You can't. They don't. They got their own grind. They got their own shit. You know, like it's just you gotta, you gotta honestly. This is its own world. You know, it is. Yeah. And sometimes you just can't mix. You know, accounts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't let worlds collide. Um, and it's it's something that's got to be grown on its own, you know. It's got to be like planted and watered and everything, and it's um, all part of the journey to to grow that on its own. Um, yeah, so we're um, getting to the end of the episode now. Um, the last ten minutes, I always tell the guests like uh, if there's any artists or businesses or Anything that um, is not getting enough eyes on it that you think should get more eyes? Any um, people that you think are talented that are underappreciated? Just give them a quick shout out here. I don't know what to say about that one. Because I feel like a lot of the. I feel like people that I think are popping are popping. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like it's just like, you know, like I would shout out. Uh, the bananas, but I feel like people have been knowing about them. <laughs> like, I, who are these bananas? Oh, then I guess maybe I should. Yeah. Bananas, bananas. It's a, uh, it's it's a hip hop showcase the third Tuesday of every month in Lamar Park. It's been going on for like over ten years, and they usually it's honestly it's like a party outside. Like if you haven't if you don't go there, you should go. Okay, it's like honestly a lot of. A lot of my early days, like as starting doing events, was like uh, I got inspiration from going to the bananas events. Okay, and they've just always been that consistent thing, the most consistent thing. Okay, so they, I they, guess I thought you knew. Yeah, no, <laughs> they got like an Instagram. Oh yeah, you can find yeah. them on their bananas, the bananas, bananas, okay. bananas network. Right on. Um, yeah. Any any other? Um, um I would say stuff? also. Those lighter fluid events that um, oh, that uh, that Audio P and BMS are doing, okay, those have been popping. Okay. You know, they're, everybody's serving. You know, their role right yeah. now, and it's and it's nice. Okay, um, and then let's uh, let's give a shout out to um, the show on the seventh. Uh, so, Me Ranchito Bar on October seventh. Doors open at nine. Uh, everyone should check that out. Uh, is there any other events you said December there's going to be one? December, yes. Yes, okay. uh, December 5th, Friday. December 5th, okay. Um, and then, of course, everyone should check out uh, your Instagram page. Um, yes. Which would be Pump Gato, uh -huh. and then also the Slang Hip Hop page. Um, yeah, any, any last things? I just want to say that I know there's a lot of uh, talented people who deserve shout outs, but I'm just like okay. I'm just not I'm not just not I'm just not spinning from the dome that I, good, you I know. I get like, it, man. I do this <laughs> like, I do this almost every week. There's just a lot of great artists. I like, do this almost every week and always forget someone and then like the when I do like the little intro before the episode, which I'll record the day I release this, um, then I always remember it and I'm like oh, guess i'll do it now so i, I was gonna say yeah. to all the artists out there i see you like i'm yeah. trust me i'm paying attention like i'm on the spot i'm, it's, I'm paying attention it's like it's just, it just a lot of people are, are killing it like yeah. it's it's just that's really all i could say a lot of people are killing it in the in the organizing aspect and in the art and in, in the artist world all right um well before we leave i'm just gonna say um if you guys want to watch uh Oh, you know what? This is probably coming out after my fight. I got a fight this Friday um, and a performance, but I think this is going to come out the weekend after. Uh, so never mind of that. Just remember to check out uh, October 7th, um, and that is a Saturday, correct? Friday. Friday. Okay, yes. Friday, 
October 7th, y'all come out and hang out. All right. Thank you for sitting down with me. Finally yeah. came to throne when I've been giving up my crown. I'm feeling blessed. Tell me how are you? Just let me know if there's anything that I can do. Yeah, I'm feeling blessed. Tell me how are you? Ain't no broken chains of war.